Hello everybody and a big week, a big week, a big welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus live lesson. I'm sorry I'm a fraction late. I wish I had a wonderful excuse. I just got distracted doing something else and I looked, looked up and went, oh no, it's seven o'clock. I better begin my lesson. Fantastic to have you all here. Uh, I didn't grab a cat this time because I just want to get cracking. So let's get cracking and let's get right into the worksheet for this week. Now, if you were watching last time, you all already have seen the beginning of, let's bring the mic microphone a little bit nearer, you will already have seen the beginning of uh, this worksheet. We did some of the opening parts, uh, we especially looked at the poetry comprehension there. I skipped over a bit of reasoning to get here. We're going to look at a few reasoning questions and then we're going to get on to a fantastic and difficult data and um, non-fiction comprehension task. Uh, we shouldn't be at it that long. I think that the lesson content today will take us maximum half an hour. I'd be amazed if it took us longer, it might even take us less. Let's just get cracking. Let's plunge in there and see how we do. Um, hello to everybody in the comments. Uh, hello, Hannah, saying, did you have a good birthday? Thank you. Yeah, it was low key, but it was very pleasant. Um, uh, oh, yeah, it says six o'clock, not seven. Good point. Uh, I won't let you deduce any clues about where I live in that case. Um, let's get started anyway with today's stuff. So we're going to just do a little bit of the verbal reasoning content. Then we're going to get onto the comprehension. So in each of questions 25 to 27, the second group of three words should follow the same pattern as three words in the first group, blah, blah, blah. Let's look at the example and that will make things clearer. So we got mop and mat and bat. So what's happened here? So we keep the M from mop to go into mat, but we take the AT from bat. Oh, I haven't turned my pen on. I'm so organized, it's just a miracle. Uh, so we've taken the M from mop and we've taken the at from bat. So then we need to do the same here. So we take the first letter of the first word, so that's gonna be C, and we take the other two letters from the other word and we get car. And indeed, it says it should be car. So that's what's going on here. So can we do the same thing down here in the questions? So we've got can, pat, and pet. So that means that we've taken the A from can, and we've taken, let's do it up here, we've taken the P and T, from pet. So now we need to follow the same pattern. So we take the middle letter of the first word, that's going to be I, and we take the first and last letters of the second word, that's going to be H and S. So we get his, which is that one there. So that should be the answer. Onwards. Kettle, net and spoon. Okay, now this is a lot trickier because we aren't dealing with three letter words. So we can't just do it mechanically, or not quite as mechanically, we have to think. So what's going on here? No, I haven't prepared the answers. I'm making it up as I go along. So we've got N and T. Where do we get those from? Well, the N definitely comes from the end of the second word. There's nowhere else for it to come from. So let's do that straight away. So this is going to begin with an R. Let's use the options to help us. If our answer begins with R, then it can't be this or this. Okay, so it's gonna be rap or rat. This tells us something useful. It means that we don't need to bother about the middle letter at all because it's the same in both cases. So we don't need to work out how you get the middle letter. That's something that can save us time because there's no choice there. So it's gonna be P or T. So here in net, the T was taken from either the third or fourth letter of the first word. So third or fourth is R or P. So it's going to be it's going to be RAR or RAP. So it can't be RAT, therefore it's this one. There's a really, really important lesson here about how you handle multiple choice tasks of any kind, which is that you can use the answers to guide you and you don't need always to work out the answer from first principles you don't need using this to work out that the answer is rap you just need to work out that the answer isn't rat tar or nap and once you've done that it must be rap you don't need to work out all the stages so looking at this you know the t in net here could have been taken from either of these T's. So the relevant letter could be R or P. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that it isn't 
T, so it can't be rat. Next one, subject seat, class, pencils, something, and desks. So again, let's look for a letter that has to be right. And let's use that to do some elimination. So subject, seat, and class. Well, the S could be from loads of places. It could be from the beginning of subject, it could be from the end of class. The E has to be from the third letter before the end, the anti-penultimate anti letter of subject. That gives that. So the second letter of this is going to be the third letter from the end. That's an I, that's going to be the second letter. So the answer must has I as the second letter. Can't be pass. Okay, what about the A here? That can only come, come from one place. It can only come from the third letter of the second word. That's the only A. Therefore, the third letter of the second word, S, is going to be the fourth letter here. So it's something, I, S, something. I, something, I, S, something can only be kiss. It's the only option. So I've worked out two letters and I've already got the answer. Your success in the Manchester Grammar School paper will not necessarily be measured by whether you can go, aha, I'm going to copy Robert's method here. Because they may well not test the same kind of reasoning task. In fact, I think it's quite unlikely they'll test the same one in any upcoming year because they want to test you with different skills. The thing to take away from this is not the method for this particular kind of question. The thing to take away from this is the approach. The way that I'm going about it logically, the way that I'm finding the simplest way through, and the way that I am not worried, worried about working out the whole word from best principles. Once I've reduced the options here to one, I'm done and I can move on. Okay, some different questions. Yeah, we've done those already. Great, there were only three. Okay. In questions 28 to 30, find the word in the group of four words in the brackets that best completes the sentence. Train is to driver as plane is to, so the driver drives the train and the pilot flies the plane. So this one is quite straightforward. Now use the same logic when attempting questions 28 to 30. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you should read everything in detail. I'm not doing that now, I'm just moving on. Smell is to nose. So let's stop and think about that before we look at this stuff. Smell is to nose as, so smell is the sense that you experience with the nose, or it's a thing that you can detect with the nose. As taste is to, so this is surely going to be mouth. Mouth isn't there, but tongue is. So the tongue is an organ in the mouth that contains a lot of taste buds. So smell is to nose as taste is to tongue. So that must be the answer. The other options don't work. Taste is to food, right? and be smell would be to the thing causing the smell. Dinner, say chocolate, same difference. We're talking about the thing that detects it. I think this is relatively straightforward, really. Fish is to water, so water being the element the fish moves in. So again, we're yeah, thing in the element moves in. Bird is to air, atmosphere, something like that. Rain, wing, air, feathers. Check the others. To rain, well, the bird doesn't need rain to move in, like a fish needs water to move in. It needs a wing to fly, but then it would be fishes to fin or something like that, fishes to tail. And again, feathers, that would be scales. No, it's definitely air. Notice that I am taking the time to check the other options, just to make sure that I haven't fallen into some kind of trap. But that's a really, really important bit of exam technique. It's very, very good to have a hypothesis. In other words, to look at the look at the question and think, this is what I expect the answer to be, and then see whether it turns up. But then you do need to check the other options, or you will sometimes make some bad mistakes. Right is to left, okay, opposite directions, as forward is to backwards, front, reverse, okay. So right is to left, and now we're talking about, so it seems we're talking to, about vehicle directions. You can turn right, you can turn left, you can move forward with the gear in first maybe, and then you can move backwards with the gear in reverse. So I thought it would be forward is to backward, or backwards, but in fact if you think of it in the context of a vehicle, all these work well 
with reverse forward is to front that's kind of the same upwards got little to do with it out no really none of the other options make any sense whatsoever and we're done and now we are moving on to the magisterial comprehension task at the end here and this is i think this is a bit of a cracker um i've got the whole thing on a pet separate page here which we can refer back to so you've got all this you've got a sort of an essay about new york and its boroughs and the sports played in those boroughs and then you've got this table with various bits of information uh, that we need to pull out and you'll see that the questions begin looking at some of these data points in isolation and then they start bringing them together so this is a 10 question exercise we're just going to do this and then we're done for the lesson content today but i think you'll find there's quite a lot to think about here okay let's hide that for a sec um, we've got all the information. Now, what you should do in a real exam is you should read the passage and think about it, first of all. I'm not going to do that here because I want to get straight on to question solving for your benefit. But that is bad exam technique. Always read the passage first, partly because that will give you an overview of where to find the information. I'm going to take a risk um, because I think it will make for a better video lesson. Right, looking at the questions. So we're going to look at the questions on this screen and then I'm going to pull up the uh, information over the top and hopefully uh, your screen's big enough that you can see this stuff. By the way, if it's blurry and you can't see it properly, you need to turn up the picture quality. If you're on YouTube, it's the cog that's just about here. Click on it and turn the video quality up to the highest that doesn't create buffering. Um, and that will enable you to see the small text more clearly. OK, anyway, let's focus on the questions. Right. Which borough has the second highest population? Okay, nice, relatively easy one to start with, I think. We're looking at the table. So borough and population, second highest. Check the question again, second highest. So the population figures here. You can see that the highest is um, Brooklyn, 2,648,000. And then the second highest is Queens with 2,358,000, more or less. So that's quite straightforward. The answer is Queens. I'd be very careful not to accidentally click the end stream button. Uh, so second highest population, it's Queens. Okay, well done to everybody who got that in the comments. Which borough's tallest building is the shortest in height? So basically we, we are comparing tallest buildings, which is the shortest. Go through that thought process first so that you don't get confused between tallest and shortest. We're comparing the tallest buildings in each borough. We need the shortest one. So tallest building, we're down at the bottom here. So which one is the shortest? Very clearly, it's the church at Mount Loretto. But the question was which borough? That's Staten Island. OK, so Staten Island is B. So the answer is B. These are not too difficult. You just need to be systematic. We're just working with the table, but no longer because now we're going to have to mix and match because it's asking about boroughs not located on an island. <coughs> you can't get that just from the table. You could fall into a terrible trap and say Staten Island is the only island, therefore it's any of the others. You would be extremely wrong. Not all islands are called island. Okay. Great Britain is not called Great Britain Island. It is nonetheless an island. Right, so which borough not, uh, where are we here? Yeah, the only borough not located on an island is home to which of these sports teams? There are two stages here. First of all, we need to find the only borough not located on an island, and then we have to find out what its sports team is. That second part's really easy, but the main thing is to find which borough is not located on an island. So I could go through this and I could be really, 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 particularly I could say, so uh, let's pull up a, let's have some purple here. Uh, I could say that Brooklyn, we're looking here, the borough is located on the western tip of Long Island. And I could go for a look at, stop, pause, slow down. There's a much, much easier way to get this. The Bronx is the only borough that is part of the United States mainland. In other words, all the other boroughs of New York or New York City are not part of the United States mainland. In other words, they are islands. The Bronx, that's it. What's its sports team? 
Um, the New York Yankees baseball team play their home games in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. So the question was, which of these sports teams? And it was the New York Yankees baseball team playing in the Bronx. So that's D. It's the Yankees. So you could have made this very complicated by crossing off all the ones that were islands. But in fact, the text tells you just in different words that one borough is not an island. It says the Bronx is the only borough that is part of the United States mainland. This is a really good reason why you should read the whole text in advance, because it will help you to notice these things and not waste time. Right, we're flying through these. Which sport is played by the team based in the borough with the largest area? OK, so what's the borough with the largest area? Start with that. Break it down. Land area. So we are here. Don't lose my finger. Oh, uh -huh. land area. Sorry, terrible jokes. Largest area, 281. So that's Queens. So we're talking about Queens. What's the rest of the question? Which sport is played by the team in Queens? So now we are looking at this part here. Queens, named after the English King Catherine the Cancer, the wife of King Charles II. The New York Mets play their baseball matches. Baseball, here. OK, so we can get rid of that. Which sport is played? Baseball. And that is option C. And then we will hide that mercifully behind my shoulder. Onwards. In which two boroughs could I watch a basketball match? OK, let's put this all on one screen so it feels a bit neater. Which two boroughs could I watch a basketball match? OK, let's have a look. Let's rub this out here. OK, so basketball match. Let's look for basketball. I'm skimming through New York and Brooklyn. That's basketball. OK, so we can watch it in Brooklyn. We can watch the Brooklyn Nets in Brooklyn. OK, what was the rest of the question? Uh, yeah, which other borough could I watch a basketball match in? The New York Knicks basketball team play at Mad in Manhattan. So Manhattan is also somewhere where I could watch basketball. So Brooklyn and Manhattan, let's hope that they're options. Brooklyn and Manhattan, yep, option B. You don't need to eliminate the other options because once you found which two it is, that must be your answer. Sorry, that's a horrible B. Now it's a beautiful B, isn't it? It's not a beautiful B. Which is the name of the sports venue in the borough whose tallest building is Harlem River Park Towers? OK, so the borough whose tallest building is Harlem River Park Towers. Break these things into stages. It's such a useful approach. So borough with Harlem River Park Towers. So the tallest building, Harlem River Park Towers. We are, so I keep doing my mouse pointer that you can't see. Harlem River Park Towers is there. That is the Bronx. And now I check the rest of the question. So the Bronx, name of the sports venue in the Bronx. So where do we talk about the Bronx? We are up here in this bit here. Bronx, da, 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 da. the New York Yankees basketball team playing their home games in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. OK, I think it's the stadium is called the Yankee Stadium, not the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. OK, Yankee Stadium, very famously, actually. So the answer is Yankee Stadium, A. What am I doing here? I'm not getting confused by the chains of reasoning in the question. I'm thinking, what's the first thing that I need to find out? What's the base information? So I'm finding that and then I'm adding the layer on top of that. So for example, in this one, the first thing I need to find out is which borough contains Harlem River Park Towers. So I go to the table, I look at tallest buildings and I find Harlem River Park Towers, I find the Bronx, and then I look at what the sports venue is. So I go to the text, I find the section on the Bronx, Bronx and I find the sports venue, Yankee Stadium. So if I break it into stages, I don't get lost. I just do one thing at a time and I give my brain less to process. And under exam stress, that is much easier. OK, we've only got five questions left. This is the same information that we just went through, just repeated for your benefit. Uh, but we've got it in our separate window. What's the name of the tallest building in the borough that is not named after a European person or place? Forget the tallest building. We're chunking it. We're doing it in stages. Which borough is not named after a European person or place? OK, which borough is not named after a European person or place? 
Let's get rid of our purple. Oops, that isn't a rubber, that's a pen. Important difference. Right. So let's go with green. See how this shows up on your display. Uh, Burrows, what are they named after? Bronx is named after Swedish born. Jonas Bronk. That doesn't sound like a face. Jonas Bronk? Jonas Bronk? 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 I don't know. I can't speak Swedish. I'm just having fun making up sounds. Jonas Bronk. Um, it was that Swedish anyway. So it ain't the Bronx. Um, Brooklyn. Don't stand from Bru Brooklyn in the Netherlands. Okay. Um, so it's not that. Manhattan. The name is derived from the word Manhattan or something in the language of the Lenape tribe. Apologies to any Lenape tribe members who, who are excruciated by, by my pronunciation. Uh, this means the place for gathering the wood to make bows. That is not named after a European thing. It's clearly named after a Native American, um, after a word in a Native American language. So Manhattan. OK, what's the rest of the question? Um, name of the tallest building in Manhattan. Easy. Manhattan, One World Trade Center. Okay. Five, four, one. Um, one World, why did I say five, four, one? I was just reading out a random number from the table. Ignore me. One World Trade Center, that is option A. 38, which of the bows with an ice hockey team has the higher population? I've gone very orange, haven't I? It's the changing light as I do this. Anyway, um, as evening falls upon the land. Which of the bows with an ice hockey team has the higher population? Burrows with an ice hockey team. So the first thing is Burrows with an ice hockey team. So who has an ice hockey team? The Bronx has a baseball team. We don't know about an ice hockey team. Um, Brooklyn has an ice hockey team, the New York Islanders. So Brooklyn. Uh, Manhattan has an ice hockey team, the New York Rangers. So Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Staten Island has nothing. So it's Brooklyn or Manhattan. What was the second part of the question? Uh, higher population, Brooklyn or Manhattan? Brooklyn or Manhattan. So Brooklyn, has a population of 2.6, Manhattan 1.6, um, rounding down. So Brooklyn has the larger population. So Brooklyn, that is B. Again, it's easy when I break it into stages. And that's, off, that's generally the way when dealing with complex information. You've got to break it down into units that are less complex. You know, I'm just going to turn my light up because I don't know if you can see I'm starting to get some fuzziness behind. It's because it's, I'm getting less light from the skylight. And so I need to have more artificial light in the room. There we are, it's less fuzzy. The joys of green screen. Uh, okay. Oh, my face has gone fuzzy. It's defocused. Focus face, that's it. Good. Um, which of these statements is true? The borough with the largest area. These are our last two questions. Then we're finishing. The borough with the largest area has the largest population. Okay, let's have a look. Is that true? So the borough with the largest area, that's Queens, but the largest population is actually Brooklyn. So Brooklyn has a much higher population density. So that is false. Get rid of that. The borough with the smallest area has the smallest population. So land area, smallest area is Manhattan. This is, I know already it's not gonna be true because clearly it's Staten Island with the smallest population. So this isn't true either. <coughs> the borough with the largest area has the lowest population density. Okay. Does it give us population density? Oh, it does. Good. The borough with the largest area has the lowest population density. So the largest area, that's Queens. Population density, no, Staten Island has an even lower one. So that isn't true either. Better hope it's the last one, or I've made a mistake somewhere. The borough with the smallest area has the highest population density. In other words, it's small, everyone's squeezed in. Smallest area, highest population density. This is going to be true because it's clearly Manhattan, uh, famously a very, very, very dense population. Smallest area, 59. Largest density, 27 going on 28. So this one is, fortunately for us, true. Unfortunately for people trying to afford property in Manhattan. Which of these statements is false? 
The borough named after a Swede has the third highest population density. Okay, borough named after a Swede, you'll remember that. So a borough named after a Swede is um, Swede is Jonas Bronk, and that's the Bronx. Third highest population density, I think. Yep. Population density, the Bronx, 13,000. So that comes after Manhattan, 27, Brooklyn, 14, the Bronx, 13, 8, 3. So that's correct. Okay, so that is a true statement. All of the boroughs that are located on islands, so that it is everything except the Bronx, the Bronx is the only borough on the United States mainland, so the everything except the Bronx are larger in area than the borough that is not located on an island. Okay, this is not true. I know this isn't true because um, Manhattan, for example, is on an island and it's smaller in area than the Bronx. So this is our false statement because actually the Bronx is bigger than at least Manhattan, which is located on an island. So Manhattan is not larger than the Bronx. Good, we got that. So this is a false statement. It's gonna be B. I'm just gonna check the others because we're in oodles of time and that isn't a B. But also these are quite complicated. I want to make sure that I haven't made a mistake. If I had spare time in the exam, I would double check these other options. C, the borough with the biggest population does not have a baseball team. This is an easy one to check. Biggest population is, we said this, Brooklyn. Does Brooklyn have a baseball? team uh well ice hockey and basketball um you know what this is actually an unprovable statement they've worded this one a bit badly because they've told us that brooklyn does have ice hockey and basketball they do not tell us that brooklyn does not have baseball baseball is not mentioned in the section about brooklyn it might just be something they haven't told us. So I know what they're getting at, but this is an unprovable statement. Maybe, because they're very smart people who set these exams, maybe that was deliberate. Maybe they want to say this is not a false statement, it's just an unprovable statement, whereas B is false. Actually, as I think about it, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. I reckon that's what they meant. I reckon they meant this to be an unsupported statement, but they wanted you to understand that that's not the same as a false statement. I'm going to assume that's what they meant. Um, I would say, if you're watching this from Manchester Grammar School, stick your check in the post, but I don't even know if any of my banks take checks anymore these days. Does anyone write checks? Do any of you, do any of your parents still write checks? I'd love to know. Um, oh, Catherine Chen says, I passed my grammar school test because of you. Um, that's wonderful to hear. Uh, that is a, a false statement because you most definitely passed it because of you. Uh, all I did was help you learn how to do some things which you could otherwise have learnt from a book or some other source. How do I know that? Because you were smart enough to pass your test. Uh, it's all rather circular, but very well done anyway. Very well done. Uh, City Field is located in the same borough as One Court Square. Let's check this and find out why this one, why this one is true, or at least not false. City Field, One Court Square. So, uh, one court square is in our table. I knew that one of them would be in our table. One court square, that's Queens. So is City Field in Queens. So we go to the Queens section here without losing the edge of my finger. Um, and City Field, so that's the same borough. I knew that'd be true, it is true. So the answer was indeed B. We were right there, well done team. And that's it. This is the end of the examination. The point at you go, yes, I made it to the end. Um, and yes, I skipped a lot of questions along the way, but that was only because I wanted to choose the most interesting ones for you. I really, oh, oh, brilliant. We got a challenge. I think 39 is wrong, says Top A, because Manhattan is the smallest, but it doesn't have the highest population. I love being wrong. It's much more interesting than being right. Uh, at least I apply that to these lessons. I don't apply it to my life in general. I don't want to be wrong. Um, okay, Manhattan is the smallest, but doesn't have the highest population. Uh, but the smallest area has the highest population. Density. Density. Population density. You did not read the question properly. Oops, I'm on the wrong one though. That doesn't help. <clears throat> there we are. Manhattan, population density, most definitely the highest. Manhattan, land area, 
most definitely the smallest. The smallest borough most certainly does have the highest population. Density, top say, you did not read the question properly. Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't wrong. Oh well. It happens often enough, it doesn't have to, have to happen every time. Right, have we got any of... <clears throat> come on, come on, come on, give me your questions. Give me your questions. Uh, what building has the most stories? Uh, it's a very interesting question. Uh, yeah. In terms of dark, mysterious stories, I, I'd be tempted to say something like something like the Vatican, but then I'd probably get in trouble with uh, some of my viewers, so I won't say that. Um, what can a child do but not see, says Football Times Games? I love people asking riddles. It seems to me that there are surely many answers to this question, but... Maybe not. Tell me, what can a child do but not see? Um, EZLM Plus, did you get this paper from Nick Dale's practice papers? No, you plonker. I got it from Manchester Grammar School website. What do you think? Um, <laughs> um, what is the hardest subject in your opinion? Someone asks that every week. I'm getting a little bit bored of that question. Go back to any of my recent videos to find somebody else asking it. Top tips for comprehension. Top tips for comprehension. I love the fact that your name has a banana. In fact, your name is the neon banana and it has a banana. Everything is wonderful about this, apart from the, that your banana doesn't appear to be neon, but you can't have everything. Top tips for comprehension. Uh, there is only... Well, there's one toppest top tip, uh, which is read the question properly and work out what the key question words are before you do any work. And when you've chosen your answer or written your answer, depending on the type of comprehension, check the question again, check the things you underlined and make sure that you did exactly that thing. That is the number one tip for comprehension. No other tip will ever beat it. Um, yeah, it's like an Olympic record that will never be beaten. Other tips for comprehension, read the text first, recheck the text before answering every single question. Top tips for comprehension. There are many others. I have more, but those will do. To everyone frenetic about the 11 plus, all I can say is not worth copious amounts of stress. With Easy LM Plus, I managed to squeeze into the top 40 ranking. Got nothing else to say to that one. Um, oh, I love riddles. Thank you, Manazi Das. If a red house is made of red bricks and a yellow house is made of yellow bricks, what is a green house made of? Uh, yeah, it's, it's obviously green bricks, clearly. Um, <laughs> I, think, I don't think this one's quite as baffling as you want it to be. I think you're supposed to say this to someone really quickly so they fire back the answer. I think in writing it's a bit too obvious. Um, though, God, the comments are coming in so fast I can't read them all. What should you focus on most for Altrincham, Altrincham girls? Um, getting out of Altrincham, I'd say. No, I can't say that's another thing I'll get into trouble for. Um, with pointed fangs I sit and wait. With piercing force I crunch out fate. Grabbing victims, proclaiming might. Physically joining with a single bite. What am I? Uh, yeah, interesting. Um, I don't know, it's Crocodile Clip? I've got no idea, no idea. It doesn't really match crushing out fate, does it? What r easy, uh, what creative writing tips do you have? Don't use my handwriting. Congrats, I got into a good GM as well. Do you mean GS? Do you mean a grammar school? I, I don't know, I don't know anything about this stuff. What has to be broken to be used? To be broken to be used? Uh, there are lots of options here. I mean, I'm thinking uh, one of those glow sticks that you wave around at a party. Uh, they need to be broken to be used, but that probably isn't what you mean. Um, what key opens a banana? A monkey. That was a very obvious one. If I got it, it's obvious. Can I send you work even without the membership? Uh, you can the very first time because I have a free marking offer. Uh, but please use it honestly. Please don't send me work from a different email address and try to get it twice. I had one person, there was one person who was a viewer of the channel who, up until a few months ago, was just bombarding me with work from different email addresses. And I fell for it a few times. And then I felt a bit exploited. Don't do that. But if you haven't sent me work before, yes, you can send me work for free marketing without a membership. You can also send me work without a membership and just pay as you go. But a membership is probably cheaper if you do it with any frequency. Um, do, 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 do. When you need me, you throw me away. When you're finished with me, you throw me away. What am I? There were lots of deep emotional answers to this, I'm sure. Okay, people asking for tips with for specific schools. Uh, I'm a bit reluctant to give those because there are people here from preparing for hundreds of schools. Uh, and so I don't want to get sucked into any one. And they'd be the same tips, just slightly adapted to the topics focused on by the given school. A Tiffin Girls tests a wide range of things, so just practice all your 11 plus stuff and you'll be fine. Or you won't, 
but you probably will be. <laughs> what to do if there are multiple double letters in question type 2830? Oh, that was, I think I showed you that. That was where you have to use the answers to rule out options. Um, okay, it's all just riddles. When do you start doing maths live? I do do maths live. I do it quite often. I did fractions lesson just two or three weeks ago, probably about three weeks ago. Um, I just don't do it all the time because uh, that would be boring. And there are more kinds of exam for English as well. Okay, enough. I love the riddles, but I'm not going to let them delay the end of the lesson. So it's just going to be time for a quick tip and then we will go. This week's tip of the week is, it's going to be very deep, deep and philosophical. So I'm going to adopt my deep and philosophical voice and lean in terrifyingly close. Don't be afraid of getting stuff wrong. Your main aim when practicing for an exam should be to get things wrong, as many things wrong as possible, and then work out how you could have got them right. That does not mean go into something that you could do well and make lots of stupid mistakes. It means find work that challenges you, that you can't just reel off like that. Look for work that forces you to expose your own weaknesses and your own mistakes. Not to the extent of getting everything wrong, but getting a good few things wrong. And then really focus your attention on working out how to get those things right. Learn to see mistakes and even failures as good things and as successes because they are the most important part of your revision. Someone who just does work that they can get right all the time will be completely confounded when in an exam they are confronted with things that they don't know how to do. Don't be that person. Don't be afraid of getting things wrong. Getting things wrong is good. And that is your uplifting tip of the week. All right, everybody, I've, I've given you a tip. I've answered a few of your questions. I've attempted a few of your riddles. And I've even taught you how to do some comprehension, although I'm sure you knew it all anyway. So that will do for this week. It's been a relatively short one, shortish, and that's great. It means I can go away and have some dinner. You can get away, go away and have some dinner or do something even more fun. And... There's nothing else for me to say apart from I'll see you next Tuesday evening at six o'clock. Bye bye to you all. Thank you for joining. See you soon. Where is the button to stop this? Oh, there it is. <laughs>